like to show you what we can do with process integration using this process designer where you can call services and um, have conditional flows and wait for um, callbacks that may happen later and other um, advanced capabilities that are um, designed in this uh, process developer tool that I'm showing you now. But before I show you how you can design these processes, let me show you a scenario. Um, the scenario I have in mind is one where I've got Salesforce, and in Salesforce I've got accounts, and I've got opportunities that I'm working on to sell things to these accounts. And ultimately when the um, account when an opportunity reaches um, a sale, it needs to go into uh, a, a sales order in NetSuite. So I've got a corresponding account in NetSuite. And I've also got, I'm imagining that I've got a third party approval system, that I'm not using the approval system that's inside of Salesforce, but that people outside of the users of Salesforce need to um, when an opportunity gets to the point of like 70% likely and there's a, there's a price for it, there needs to be an approval that goes out to this external system. So the total flow is, um, and I, maybe I'll even show it in the process, that when an opportunity reaches 70% probability, we get a message from Salesforce. Salesforce automatically sends us a message. And if the amount is either under 500K or the discount is under 15%, then it's automatically approved. If it's over either of those or both of those are over those thresholds, then it goes to a manager for approval with this um, external system, which I'm going to mimic with a REST-based call and a REST-based callback. Then I'll update the opportunity to say that it is awaiting approval or approved, if in the case it was auto-approved. And then I'm done with the whole approval phase of the opportunity. Then I'll wait until the sale occurs, if it does. And that could happen significantly later, but um, the process will wait in this step here, the wait for 100% opportunity. It will wait for the message to come from Salesforce again, this time for 100%. Um, we'll immediately acknowledge that message before going off and do the, doing the real work, which is to first go back to Salesforce and ask for other information about the account, and then create a NetSuite sales order and then once we've created that sales order and it's given us back the order number, we'll go back to Salesforce and write it back to Salesforce. So you get this nice mix of things happening in Salesforce, things happening in NetSuite, and things happening in this external approval system. So let's get it started. I'll start by going to an opportunity. And I'm going to choose an opportunity that's above that threshold. Um, and this opportunity, after good sales work, gets up to um, perception analysis, which is the 70% threshold. So if I save that, that will um, send the out, outbound message. And now I've switched to uh, the process monitoring console. And if I click on active processes, I can see that there's a process called opportunity to order, and there's actually one called approve order, which is completed. That's, that's which kicked off the whole approval process. This opportunity to order, if I click on this, it shows me where I am in the process. It shows me that I've received a notification, and I've gone to get approval answer from manager. In fact, um, this little plus sign means that it's an embedded sub-process, so I can click on that to see what's inside of it. And it, what it did is it updated the opportunity back in Salesforce, and it sent the request for approval to the approval system and is waiting for the approval. So let's see the results of both of these things. First, um, the, if I go back to the opportunity and I refresh it, 
I see its approval status has moved to awaiting approval. And then the process for the requesting quote approval, what I did for this is I'm, I made a, a REST call to the um, Amazon Web Service simple email service. So I sent an email to um, a phony account called jmanager at um, Mailinator. So I, I look in here and I see information about what should be approved. I'll go ahead and approve now. Approve this. Now this link is itself going to not just show me a little something, but it will um, call back into the process. So if I refresh this, I can see that it's received the approval and it's gone back and it's continued. Now that finishes the sub process and it gets us all the way through back to we've updated the opportunity and we're waiting for um, it to get to the final sale. So let me go back here. Um, I can refresh this and see it, it got back, got to the approved status. So some, some days or weeks later, we um, succeed and get to closed one. So now we um, have another workflow, uh, Salesforce workflow rule kicks off an outbound message and um, I will, uh, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and I can see that it uh, finished the opportunity. It um, got information from Salesforce. It created a sales order, and it wrote the sales order back to um, back to Salesforce. So if I refresh this again, I can see there's an order number here, 9924. So if I go over to NetSuite and I look at sales, the list of sales order orders, I can see this $580,000 order that it just put in. So, um, so that's kind of the end-to-end. -end. Um, what's then interesting is how this was created. Um, actually, before I get to the process part, let me show you what's happening in Salesforce. I'm going to um, go to the Settings tab and look at its um, rules. Right, actually, I'll, let me go with Workflow is what they call these. Workflow rules. I've got a rule for opportunity at 70%, opportunity at 100%. So going into any one of these, I can see that it sends an out, uh, when it reaches that threshold, it sends an outbound message. And the outbound message sends, it turns out it's a SOAP request to the, um, uh, to our servers, and um, it sends these fields. I, I chose which fields I'd like for it to send, because um, when you edit these things, you can say, oh, of all of the opportunity fields, which ones do I want to, ha to have them send? And once you've chosen which you're going to send, Salesforce provides a WSDL file that includes all of the fields that are being sent. So that kind of a WSDL file that represents not something that Salesforce offers, but something that Salesforce will call. So it's a somewhat unusual use of a, a WSDL file. Um, and what we've done is we've taken that file and we brought it in here. So this start opportunity to order outbound message, that is that same WSDL now in, a way, in our WSDL editor, so you can go and drill into each thing up and down and look around in the, um, and see the, what the or opportunity will contain. So that's, this is the, the WSDL editor part of this design experience. Um, let me go back to the process. And um, one thing that uh, is also a nice little feature is um, the relationship tab. The relationship tab shows the various WSDLs that are used and the other relationships between the WSDLs and the relationship between those and 
um, XML schema files and other such things. So it can be valuable for getting a, an overall sense of the project. So when we receive this notification, that 70% outbound message notification, um, that goes into a variable, or actually a couple variables, the opportunity and the outbound message. And then because that went into that variable, when we wanted to do this test, we created a test using XPath. But you don't have to be very familiar with XPath path to do this. To check if the amount is greater than uh, 500,000, you would just say, oh, the opportunity, and you'd look at what fields it is, you know, there's the amount, and then you'd, um, if you, heck, if you even forgot what, how to say greater than, you could double click that, um, and then put in your amount, something like that, um, and uh, and similarly for the others. So that gets you um, how you do some of the conditionals. Um, let me drill into this sub process and take a look at something that I think is interesting, which is um, the first the the call to the REST service is pretty straightforward, but also this receiving of the answer. Anytime you receive something that needs to continue a process that is running, it needs to know how to take a message that is being sent to the system and route it to the right instance of the process. There might be a lot of outstanding approvals. So what happens is this request of approval has a correlation, and this correlation um, is set when I send out the request, and then the response, if I look at the response, I can see wait for that same correlation to come back. That also happens later in the process where I look for, um, where I wait for the, the next outbound message. Here I've got this opportunity correlation that I'm looking for. And um, opportunity correlations, um, these are based on the opportunity ID that comes back with it. So um, you can see that it says, when, where am I going to get this opportunity from? I'll get the opportunity from the request at this spot. So it, here again, as in all of these things, it shows you where, what data is available to you and where to get the data. So a lot of um, kind of drilling down and clicking around and stuff like that. So let me give you a, a sense for how you do a call to a service. Let's imagine for the time being that this writing of the sales, the order number back to Salesforce wasn't there. So I just deleted that. And, um, and that the NetSuite sales order, when it came back, it um, – Let's say I hadn't yet decided what to do with that. Maybe I had um, just stuck it into a single variable. What I'm, and then I later come in and decide, okay, I want to get the, the order number from the sales order that came back that was just created and write it back to Salesforce. So um, what I'll do is I will have the output be um, the X paths, which is just a way of saying I'm going to take things out of the result. Here's the result. And I'm going to pull something out of the result. I'm going to pull out the right response. And it's got a base ref. And the base ref has an internal ID. Um, that ID is going to be written into the um, opportunity. And where in the opportunity should it be written? Well, let's take a look. Um, there's something called order number, DSE order number, that's a good place to put the NetSuite order number that came back from NetSuite. So we'll stick it there. So that's that just stuck it into the order in our variable that's in the process, but it didn't write it back to Salesforce. In order to write it back to Salesforce, pretty straightforward. Take a look at this tab over here. We've got the participants of the process. And there's two kinds of participants. There's the process service consumers, 
which are, is the people, the, the, the things that are calling into this service. And you can see there are two outbound messages from Salesforce that are calling into our process. And then there's the service providers. I've got NetSuite, I've got Salesforce, and I've got the approval system. For Salesforce, these are the operations available. A bunch of things around describing, creating, getting, and updating. So let me do an update. I'll just drop in an update. And I'll say um, update the order number in Salesforce. I like to have a decent name on my on my um, activities. Um, and now I'm going to say where the data is to come from. Let's see what it wants. So I look at the to path. I see that it wants one or more S objects. So I grab that and say, for the S object, I'm going to want to pass it the opportunity. And that's pretty much it. So for things where it's pretty straightforward, where I've got, I've got a, an object laying around the opportunity that contains a bunch of data that is, I'm going to be writing back, this sort of thing is very simple. Um, I can look at what the opportunity contains in case I'm interested. Even at design time, I can look and see the, um, the definitions of these things and um, the, the fields available in the order and um, make use of the order um, that, through that and, and other ways. And I can simulate, and there's a bunch of other things that I can do with this process. So you can see that it's pretty easy to use web services. It's easy to use structures that are already defined, schemas, WSDLs. It's a lot of point and click, drag and drop. It is pretty involved um, in that you've, there's usually for web services a lot to them. And, um, but this is providing a powerful tool to really um, take advantage of those of those services and string them together in a process.